Hey, what's going on, everyone? Jun here with Hapa Ekaiwa. Joining me today is a super special guest, my wife, the one and only Dr. Akina. Hey, Yay! Everyone. Welcome, Akina. How you doing today? <laughs> So, uh, as some of you may know, Akina is actually a pharmacist and she works at a hospital here in Los Angeles. And in today's interview, I'm going to ask her about her situation and how her hospital is dealing with COVID-19 patients. で今日このインタビューに入る前に皆さんにお伝えしたいのですが、このインタビューは基本的にすべて英語で行います。専門的な用語も結構ありますので、下の字幕を見ながら今日の動画を一緒に見ていただければと思います。So, Akina,、um, the word on the street is,、uh, you are the number one pharmacist in Los Angeles, right? <laughs> the word on the street? <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> no, really? I heard that.、Uh, They don't in the... do rankings on pharmacies. No, no, no I heard that、uh, like in the pharmacy world, you're like the Kobe Bryant of all the pharmacists. No. <laughs> There's no Kobe Bryant in pharmacy. Oh, okay, okay. So maybe that's just me. But、um, all right, well, who are you? What do you do? Can you tell、uh, my viewers、uh, about yourself a little bit? Yeah, of course.、Um, so I am an emergency. Emergency room pharmacist.、Um, so in America, there are basically like two different types of pharmacists. One is an inpatient pharmacist, and one's an outpatient pharmacist.、Um, inpatient pharmacists generally like work in the hospital, and then outpatient pharmacists they work、um, in your retail pharmacies.、Um, so just like your regular Walgreens or CVS pharmacists.、Um, so inpatient pharmacists. Specialize usually、um, in different areas. So, there are pharmacists who specialize in like chemotherapy,、um, pharmacists who specialize in pediatrics or ICU.、Um, so, my specialty is emergency room. Emergency room,、mm-hmm. I see. And、um, what are like some of your specific roles as a pharmacist in the emergency room? Because I know, like in、uh-huh. Japan,、um, it's I wouldn't say it's rare, but There aren't too many pharmacists that actually work at the hospital. So, can you elaborate a little bit on your role as a pharmacist in the emergency room? Oh, sure. So,、um, in the emergency room, the ER pharmacist is a part of the team. So, we don't actually work in the pharmacy, we work、um, on the floors in the emergency room. So, we're like a drug information resource for all of the doctors and the nurses. So, if they have like dosing questions or Questions on how to administer the drugs,、um, they come to us. And then we also attend all of the codes. So, in our hospital, a code blue is like when you need to do CPR for the patient.、Um, so, the pharmacist will be the one that prepares like all of the medications that you give during that code.、Um, my hospital is also a comprehensive stroke center. So,、um, the codes that we go to are called code strokes. So, we'll go to the codes. Um, and if they need medications there, we get the medications. So we're very much a part of the team there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. Well, today、um, I want to ask you about how your hospital is dealing with the COVID 19 patients.、Um, if you could kind of give us a, a little inside look into your hospital, how you're dealing with it, how you're preparing for the COVID 19 patients, that would be great. Oh, yeah. I would say that、uh, my hospital has been doing a really good job in preparing for、um, the surge in patients that we're supposed to be getting.、Um, and so it starts basically with protecting、um, the staff.、Mm-hmm. So、um, my hospital has been very good about getting what they call PPE, or personal protective equipment.、Mm-hmm. Um, so that can be anything from like masks to goggles. Um, they have like those suits, and then they also have like the they're called pappers, but they're like、mm, they're like helmets that doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists wear.、Mm-hmm. Um, but those are for like very high risk procedures or anything where you have like very、um, high risk for getting the virus from the patient, you would wear that. And it's basically like a helmet with a filter. And it can actually filter out the virus.、Um, so, those are very important、um, when you're working in a hospital setting and taking care of these types of patients. Right, right. So, it sounds like、um, your hospital puts 
the workers first, right? right? Yeah, Making exactly. sure that you guys are staying safe through、yeah. this whole situation that's taking place.、Um, besides the workers, is there anything else that your hospital is doing right now in preparation for the COVID 19 patients? Yeah, so we're actually doing a lot.、Um, so the first thing we started was、um, as soon as this whole coronavirus thing started happening. Um, we started screening patients outside of the emergency room.、Mm -hmm. um, so, we didn't want any like, COVID positive patients to be like, inside of our waiting rooms.、Um, so, we would have screening ten tents like, outside of the ER. So, no one would really come in without a mask. And then we would ask questions if they have like, any respiratory symptoms or a fever. Um, then we would give them a mask so that they're not exposing the entire ER、mm -hmm. um, to the virus. And then、um, from there, it kind of escalated. So now we have what's called a surge tent. So it's like a huge tent、um, in our parking lot, and that's where some of these COVID patients would go.、Um, so they wouldn't necessarily come into the emergency room, but they would just be treated in the tent if they have just mild symptoms. Right, right.、Um, and then We've also been preparing by kind of zoning the emergency room. So、um, there's a hot zone and a cold zone.、Mm -hmm. So, in the hot zone, that's where all of the potential coronavirus patients would go. And then the cold zone is where like, all of the non、um, coronavirus type patients would be. So, kind of creating that separation so we're not contaminating. Um, patients who aren't there for you know, respiratory symptoms or like the virus.、Um, so, the hot zone is an area where everybody is covered from head to toe in、um, this PPE.、Mm -hmm. So, like you'd be wearing the goggles, you'd be wearing a big bunny suit, a mask,、right. um, double gloves. So, you're completely protected. Um, to limit the exposure、mm -hmm. that you would have、um, because those are like where the high risk patients would be. Right, right. And by the way, guys, <laughs> that is exactly where you're going to be working, right?、Yeah. In the hot zone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So,、um, because we're a big part of the team,、um, we're actually going to be working in the hot zone.、Mm -hmm. um, so, that should be an interesting experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Personally, I'm you know, pretty worried about it because you're going to be working directly with、uh, COVID 19 patients.、Um, how are you feeling about it?、Um, you know, I think it's kind of something that you just do because you're a healthcare professional.、Um, and I think that's just been the general attitude of like, most of my coworkers is that、um, you just have to do your job. And do what you're called for.、Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that、um, we just do every day, but we're just getting so much media attention because、right. of the coronavirus. But I feel like for us, like, we're just going into work and we, we're doing what we need to do for our patients.、Mm -hmm. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a strong woman right there. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I could do that, but、uh, obviously she can. She's much, much stronger than I am. <laughs> so,、um, you know, one of the things that's、uh, you know, been talked about with this whole coronavirus outbreak is the overcrowding of the hospitals. Right.、Um, how has it been like at your hospital so far?、Um, well, I think in California, we've been pretty lucky because、um, we haven't seen as many cases as like New York. Um, the East Coast has definitely been hit a lot harder, but we have been learning from their experiences and what they've been experiencing in like Italy、um, and other epicenters around the world.、Um, so we've been preparing, and our hospital has kind of、um, set a message to like the general public in the area to、um, either call before you come in if you think you have symptoms of the virus, and then we'll meet you like outside of the ER. Um, and then also, like, not to come and just、um, contact your primary care doctor if you think that you're you know, not dying or、mm -hmm. like, you're not really like, super sick, then you don't need to come to the emergency room.、Um, and also, we've canceled a lot of our elective surgeries. So, surgeries that don't have to happen right away have all been canceled. So, it's just kind of a way for us to make room for、um, a potential surge in patients. Um, but right now, it's actually been pretty slow. So, our 
emergency room has probably been getting about 25% of the patients that we usually get. Mm -hmm. So it's been um, pretty slow. So it's been good because we've been able to practice and um, kind of practice getting all of our PPE on and um, practicing like situations that we would get. Right, so right. It's been good that we haven't been hit um, quite as hard. Right, yeah. right. And do you anticipate a surge to hit Los Angeles anytime soon, or do you think the, uh, as they say, the flat, what is it, the, the flattening the curve? Flattening the curve is working right now. I mean, I think it's definitely working. Um, there are like experts that have predicted that the surge is supposed to happen anywhere from mid to late April. Um, and we have been seeing more and more patients, but it's been um, not as fast um, of a rate as they were initially expecting. Um, and, and now we're even hearing reports of like maybe it might be in May. Mm -hmm. So we're just kind of preparing and waiting to see what happens. Right. But I don't think that we're in the clear yet. Mm -hmm. So just kind of like preparing and seeing what happens next. Right, exactly. We definitely want to hope <laughs> for the best. We ideal case situation is that the surge never hits, right? right? And you guys are prepared, definitely a good thing, um, but let's just hope that it doesn't come. But we also have to, you know, be realistic and when it does come, or if it does come, we want to make sure that you're prepared and it sounds like uh, your hospitals are doing a great job uh, with that. Um, so question to you, um, you know, I watch the TV, I hear about, you know, COVID patients and what it's like to actually, you know, contract the virus you see it firsthand, right? Mm -hmm. um, can you maybe explain to me and the viewers what you're seeing uh, from these patients? Yeah, so I remember my first patient um, with the COVID came in a couple weeks ago and she was a 40 year old and she had kind of like a cough and a fever for about a week. And she went to her doctor and they gave her antibiotics and they thought she just might have had like a pneumonia. Mm -hmm. um, and then when she came in, she came in by ambulance and she was in complete respiratory failure. And I remember for the first time I saw like the doctors putting on what they call the pappers. It's like their helmets with the filters and they had a respiratory therapist and a nurse. Um, that was getting ready to intubate the patient and they all like had their suits on and it was kind of like the first time that I experienced that type of situation mm -hmm. um, So it seemed really scary and like foreign to me, but now like over the weeks it's become like a normal scenario mm -hmm. um, But I remember thinking like wow it can actually like really hit you really quickly mm -hmm. um, And she was only like in her 40s and I was thinking like it could be anybody because she really only had a history of asthma um, so it could be like, you know, someone like my mom and she's only 60. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of like made me realize that it's, it could be anybody that gets affected by this. Right. And that's, uh, you know, been the whole thing about the coronavirus outbreak, right? Is when it first happened, um, it was said that the elderly are mm -hmm. very high at risk, right? right of yeah. contracting the virus and also people with, you know, existing medical conditions, right? Yeah. And there's, in the beginning at least, they said that um, if you are a younger person, then mm -hmm. it might not be as harmful, right? right. Or fatal, maybe. Yeah. Um, but it's starting to sound like things are starting to change and you're seeing various cases here where maybe it's not necessarily just the age factor right. anymore, right? Yeah, so age is definitely the main factor. Um, but also I think they're seeing that certain health conditions can also make you more vulnerable to the mm -hmm. virus. And we are seeing young patients that are requiring like intubation, they're uh -huh. in the ICUs. Um, so I don't think that we know exactly what the whole story is behind the virus. So mm -hmm. It's kind of a message just to young people that right. you know you could be affected too. It's right. not just the elderly. And just because you're young, it doesn't mean that you're in the clear, right? right. And, um, you know, just to highlight that one point you were mentioning too, it's really mind-blowing how fast this coronavirus can attack somebody too. It takes right. a long time for the symptoms to show, uh -huh. and yet once it hits you, it seems like, boom, it will like all of a sudden spread really fast. You see the symptoms come out and... Yeah, I think it depends like on the person and what their underlying conditions are too. But 
I think for some patients it is really unfortunate because they decompensate really quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, regarding the novel coronavirus, what are you most worried about? What am I most worried about? Um, I think the hardest thing in all of this is to kind of find a balance mm -hmm. um, between all of the social distancing because we know that it works. Um, but it's not a sustainable way to live, um, especially like for all the restaurants and like the entertainment industry, the travel industry, um, they're all being really highly affected by it. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't think it's a solution to just completely shut everything down for the next like six months. Um, but I'm just afraid that once they kind of let go of all these measures, um, we're just gonna see another peak mm -hmm. um, in the coronavirus in all the cases, so I'm just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. Right, right. So you are maybe kind of thinking that there's like a first wave and then maybe mm -hmm. a second wave and even like a third wave that could yeah. hit with this coronavirus. Yeah. So until there's a vaccine, mm -hmm. um, we're just going to have to balance mm -hmm. and see um, how much you know, we can open up the restaurants right. without getting like all these new cases. And I mean, truth to be told, me and Akina, you know, we found out in the last two weeks that as much as we like to stay at home and cook meals, <laughs> we love going out too. And it's been yeah. really, really yeah, difficult right. for us right now being able to go to restaurants and eat yeah. food and like... Uh, Takeout isn't the same. <laughs> it's just not the same. And like, yeah, we're starting to get a little bit crazy these days, right? Yeah. <laughs> you just want to go out and like sit in yeah. like a new environment. Yeah. Even if the food isn't that great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, you know, um, we'll kind of see what happens. Um, you know, obviously the government can't, you know, have this policy in place where they keep people at home for the rest of their lives. Um, but, uh, I guess, you know, it is kind of worrisome to think that just after two or three weeks, you know, the virus is completely contained because it's still going to be out there. Right. It's, uh, we'll have to just wait and see what happens, you know, moving forward. Um, you know, there's like this thing kind of that was going around, especially in the beginning when the coronavirus was still brand new that, I mean, the coronavirus is just like the seasonal flu, you know, like why mm -hmm. is everybody making such a big deal out of it if it's just like a seasonal flu. From a medical professional's perspective, how is the coronavirus different from, let's say, the seasonal flu? Um, well, the flu in general, our bodies are immune to it and there's a vaccine um, that most people get. So our bodies have a general baseline immunity um, and antibodies that protect us from getting super sick. Um, and the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, it's um, something that our bodies have never seen. So I don't think our bodies really know like how to react to it and we don't have immunity mm -hmm. against the virus so we can get really sick from it. So I think um, the mortality rate is higher. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely something that you can't take lightly. Exactly, exactly. So. It is not like the regular flu, guys. Really take care of yourselves out there. All right. <laughs> um, so ever since, you know, this whole coronavirus outbreak, uh, the term social distancing has been right. heard everywhere and it's been put to practice everywhere. Um, what are your thoughts on social distancing? Um, well, right now, I think it's the only way to slow down the virus um, because the way you get it is through like the respiratory secretions of someone who is positive. So let's say like someone coughs or sneezes and then you get it on your hand and then like you touch your mouth. Um, so it's all by just like being in contact with people. Um, so at this point, I guess it's the only measure that we have. Mm -hmm. um, once we can ramp up testing, I think um, that would be one way that we could also slow down the virus, so if we have more tests available, you would know that you're positive and then you would be able to self-isolate and kind of take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I think at this point, um, it's kind of something that we have to do. Right, yeah. exactly. And that's something that we can do too, right? It's not something that's very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. You keep your distance, you stay at home. Um, you know, another thing that just recently took place, actually today you were telling me about it, is that uh, just nearby uh, Long Beach here in a place called Riverside, wearing masks have become mandatory there, right? When you're yeah. out in public. Right. Um, wearing masks, uh, is that helpful in preventing the spread of the virus? Um, it is. So they say that wearing the mask doesn't necessarily protect you, but it protects others around you. Um, so when you're wearing the mask, you're like preventing yourself from um, like spilling out your respiratory secretions. Um, and so if you like don't know that you have the virus, but you actually do have it, um, you're at least protecting other people around you. So it's kind of more of protecting the people around you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, my wife and I, we just uh, went to the grocery store today. And um, it's really crazy because uh, at least here in Los Angeles, you never see people with masks on. <laughs> yeah. Until now, until right. today, right? And we went to the grocery store. And I'd say at least like 90% of the people had yeah. masks on right yeah and um this has been a pretty big learning experience for myself too i mean going into this in whole situation it was more about protecting myself it right. was about protecting myself from catching the virus mm -hmm. but the more you get educated and the more you start learning about what is happening you have a social responsibility too right mm -hmm. of making sure that you're not spreading this virus to other people right, right. just because you are young and you might not catch it, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna give it to, let's say for example, your parents or your right. grandparents, right? Mm -hmm. And it is, that's what essentially the mask and social distancing does, right? Right, mm -hmm. so I think um, like a lot of younger people, a couple weeks ago, they just weren't taking it seriously and they just thought like, oh, I'm young, so even if I get it, it's not a big deal, but it actually is a big deal because if you like go and see your parents, then you're like giving it to your parents who might give it to your grandparents. And so it's just like this endless cycle of just like affecting people around you, mm -hmm. even though you yourself aren't really like getting all of the symptoms. Yeah. Um, so I guess this whole virus is teaching us to be less selfish yeah. and think about the people around you. Exactly. To all you young folks out there, Stop thinking about yourself. <laughs> Stop being selfish and Stop start being thinking. Selfish. <laughs> I know. Don't be like my cat Goro. He's very selfish. <laughs> Super selfish guy. Yeah. Um, so before we wrap this whole thing up, Akina, sorry, Doctor Akina, excuse myself. <laughs> um, as a health professional, uh, what do you or what advice do you give to people who are watching this today? Um, well, I'm assuming most people who are watching this are in Japan. Um, and especially if you live in Tokyo, it's probably hard to really distance yourself. Um, because in America, they're saying, you know, stay at least six feet away from each other, um, which is actually really hard to do in Tokyo because we live there, you know. <laughs> the trains are really crowded. Um, is it six feet? <laughs> yeah, are we too close right now? <laughs> this is, We're this, definitely this, too close. This is right not now. social distancing right not. here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I would say try to stay at home um, as much as possible. Um, don't go to the restaurants or like all the izakayas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and now they're saying uh, wear masks, but mm -hmm. they do that a lot in Japan too. So right. It shouldn't be much of a hard thing to do. Right, right. Exactly, guys. Um, you know, it's a very simple thing, I think, when it comes down to it, right? You do your part, you stay responsible, you stay home. You know, you uh, if you don't have to go out, you know, don't go out because the bottom line is, um, as much as you know you don't want to be the one catching it you really don't want to be that person that's spreading it and i think um, that's what the whole underlying message here today um, is mm -hmm. that uh, don't be the one that spreads it and even you know your hospital you were talking about is they're protecting their people right, right. you know and um, you want to protect your people you want to protect the people around you and uh, you know we want to put a stop to this um, as soon as we possibly can right mm -hmm. um, but i think um you know the the viewers, Akina, the viewers, sorry, <laughs> Dr. Akina, I keep making okay. this mistake. 
tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the viewers are dying to know something. I saw. <laughs> 最近日本語どう<笑>日本語どうなの最近は最近全然勉強してないね<笑>してない<笑><笑>えアキナは最,最後に日本語を勉強したのいつ多分去年ぐらいかな去年<笑>日本に住んでた時<笑>そう,そうだって昔ね日本に住んでた時1年前1年前だってね<笑>ほとんど日本語で喋ってたじゃん最近もう全然日本語喋ってないでしょ<笑><笑>でしかもだって今ね自宅待機しても家にいる時間がいっぱいあるんだからさ<笑>なんか暇なんじゃないの日本語勉強すればうんそうだね<笑><笑>じゃあちょっともしかしたらね次回の動画までにはねアキナと2人で日本語をしゃべっているねどうとどうでもいい動画を撮っちゃうかもしれないけど<笑>じゃあそれまでにちょっとあの勉強する、はい、オッケーオッケー頑張ります<笑> All right, well, Kina, well, thank you very much for joining me today. And、um, as you guys can probably see what's happening here, I got a smart one here. And to all the, all the guys out there, I'm going to just let you guys know find an intelligent woman because just from this interview, you can tell her intelligence level is way up here. And I'm like way down here. I have no idea how I ended up with. Such a beautiful, intelligent woman like Akina, you know. I don't know why she chose a man like me, <laughs> but I'm extremely fortunate. And,、um, you know, I really hope that、uh, you stay safe.、Um, to all the medical professionals who are watching this video, whether you're a doctor, you're a nurse, or a pharmacist, or, you know, just working in that field. I just want to sincerely say thank you very much for your services because you are the ones working in the front line, and without you guys, you know, we wouldn't be able to do what we are doing today, right? So、um, please continue your great work. Akina, please do take care of yourself. And、um, all you guys,、uh, my final message to you guys stay home, stay responsible, take care of yourself, and let's spread the good vibes. Not the virus, alright? <laughs> alright, guys, well, thank you guys very much for watching today. And Akina, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Maybe we'll do this again. <laughs> alright, l guys, peace! <laughs>